Well, on this very cold Wednesday, a big welcome to you. It's a, a little bit of an unusual uh, broadcast that's coming out from Destiny tonight. Uh, we've been doing all this Bible teaching over the last few weeks. And, you know, I really recommend to you, if you haven't already watched those three evenings that we did on preparing for Christmas, the promise of Christmas, the present of Christmas and the presence of Christmas, uh, go and take a watch from them. People who are doing it are sending me emails and telling me just how blessed they've been and people that didn't understand something or they never seen something and you could be one of them as well. So so go and, go and watch them if you can. This evening is a little bit different. It's just a, a one-off evening that we're doing something special upstairs in our building this evening to honour some of the people who are serving in our serving teams but we still wanted to share something with you that I think is going to be important for you from the Word of God and for them as well. But before we share it, here's, here, let's pray together, shall we? Come on, let's pray. Jesus, Saviour, Messiah, Lord, King. Oh God, we love you and we worship you. We come together and adore you, Christ the King, Christ the Lord. Christ the Saviour, born to die, but with us. And Lord, I pray that you will bless us as we listen to your word for a short time and then during this whole Christmas time that the blessing of the Lord shall make us rich and add no sorrow to it. Thank you for your promise of blessed, the blessing that you want to give us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's, let's look at, I want us to look this evening at the power of, and the importance of appreciation. You know, at Christmas time, we're not, it's not about receiving a present as being the big key thing. It's giving a present. That, that should be, because the Bible says it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. So receiving is a blessing, but giving is an even greater blessing. Amen? And, you know, it's really, really important that we get hold of that kingdom principle so we're going to talk about the power and the importance of appreciation. At Christmas time, that appreciation needs to go to Jesus. It needs to go to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, because they were all involved in this. Do you remember this? God, God so loved the whole world that he gave his only son. That was the giving of his son. Jesus came as a gift. And by the way, Jesus then gave us the Holy Spirit, and so the Father gave Jesus, Jesus gave the Holy Spirit, Jesus said before he left, I'm going to go and I'm going to, but I'm going to send another like me and he's going to be with you. So the, the God who is with you tonight is all of God, but it, it is God the Holy Spirit who is with you and he is God's gift to you. Now, when you receive a gift, what are we supposed to do? What do we say to all of our kids on Christmas morning? What do we even say to our kids when they're sat around the, the table eating their food? Or they say, Pass me that. Then we say, please. And then we say, thank you. So thank you. I mean, I wonder how many times you said thank you to anybody today. That's the power of appreciation where we go to God and we say, God, thank you for sending Jesus. We say to Jesus, thank you that you came. And we say to the Holy Spirit, thank you for making Jesus known to us. It's the power and the importance of appreciation. That's what worship is all about. That's why some people just don't get worship because they think it's about uh, the style of singing or the song that they're singing. No, it's about appreciating. It's about coming to God and saying, God, we appreciate you. We are giving thanks to you. We are blessing your name. Well, in fact, in fact, let's, let's think about a, a Bible verse. It's out of Psalm 100 verse 4. And it says, we enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And then it goes on and says, and, and we come into his courts with praise. Now, notice those two things, gates and courts. So it's, it's a simple thing, really. Let's take it just as it is. Enter his gates. That's talking about the door. That's where you, you come over the threshold. That's how you arrive. How should we arrive into the presence of God with thanksgiving? We come and we appreciate God. Okay, the picture is of the Old Testament coming in through the gates into the into the into the holy place and then going through to the holy of holies place and then of course we know that the temple veil was torn in two but this is Old Testament so we're going to stick with the imagery. We're coming towards God's presence with the gate. The gate we're not in, we're just we're on the we're in the porch. We're on the gate. We're when we're, we're ding dong in the doorbell if you like. 
What should we be saying? How should we be feeling? What should we be doing? Thanksgiving is the key. It's appreciating. It's, it's developing an attitude of gratitude. That's what it's all about. It's coming towards God with thanksgiving. And you know, whenever you come to pray, whenever you come to read the Bible, whenever you come to church, whenever you come to worship, whenever you come into the presence of God in that way. I know we're always in the presence of God, but we come in specific times and specific ways. When you do come with appreciation, come with thanksgiving. So, well, I haven't got much to thank God for. Oh, yes, you have. You're alive and you're kicking. You're listening to me tonight. And, you know, I know that if you've watched the news a little bit ago, it's like doom and gloom and doom and gloom and doom and gloom. It's doom and gloom on steroids, isn't it? But I tell you something, when you read the word of God, it's not doom and gloom on steroids. It is God's provision, God's gift, God's goodness. Goodness, remember. And when we think about that, it produces in our heart at the gate. Thanksgiving. Arrive. Don't arrive with a moan. Don't arrive with a, a, you know, a sort of complain. Arrive with thanksgiving. That's the gate. When you pass through the gate, you're then coming into his courts. That's starting now to come into the very presence of God. That's coming in. You're, you're entering in, into the house, as it were. And, and now it says that you change from thanksgiving to praise. You're coming into a place where you, you are impressed with his gifts to begin with. And you're saying, thank you. But now it's all overwhelmed with his presence. And you're saying, oh, God, you are awesome. God, you're a mighty God. And, and you're now not concerned about whether you got that prayer answered or you, you had that special little moment. You, you're just overwhelmed with Jesus. You're just overwhelmed. It's a power. It's the importance of appreciation brings you into the presence of God to a place where you're overwhelmed with his with his grace and his mercy and his love and his deity and his power and his goodness. And, and you go, wow, I am in the presence of God. And that's saying, awesome, Lord, you are just awesome. And I'm going to, I'm going to worship you. And, 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 and you even go beyond saying, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Thank you for the other. Thank you for the other. You know, sometimes we, we try and work with our grandchildren to say thank you. And they go, thank you. And then they go off and they play. And, and that's good that we're teaching them. But when we come into the courts of God and we come to that moment of praise and of worship, we go, wow, what an awesome. Then we're not bothered about which song we're singing. We're not bothered about who's sitting by the side of us in church. We're not bothered about the agenda. We're not bothered about... That's, that's what that old song, you know, we often quote it, you know, when you uh, turn, turn your eyes on Jesus and you look forward to his wonderful face, everything else goes strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Now, that's the power and the importance of appreciation. It brings you through the gate into the courts where you now are going, God, we love you. We worship you. What an awesome God you are. Hallelujah. The principle now of entering into God's presence with thanksgiving and then being caught up with praise is a principle that works even in our own relationships. You know, when you meet somebody, oh, I've got something I want to tell you. It's not a great way to start a conversation. Oh, I've got a bone to pick with you. It's not a great way to start a relation, uh, to, to come into a relationship. You know, when you meet somebody, let's come with appreciation. You know, that could be your wife when you wake up in the morning. You know, the first thing you say to her is, well, you know, the first thing you should really be saying to us is, I love you. I'm blessed to have you as my wife or as my husband. It's the same with our children. You know, let not the first thing that we say to them in the morning be, get up, you're going to be late for school. Why don't we speak some words of appreciation to our kids and, and train them to speak words of appreciation to you as a parent? Why? Because... If we train a child in the way that it should go, when it's old, it won't depart from them. We've got to train, you know, things like appreciation don't always come natural because we so often live out of a carnal nature, which needs to be converted and changed. And I'll tell you one of the big changes that you can see when God has done a work in somebody's life is they change from complaining to appreciating. They change from being critical to just being generous towards people. They change from being picky to being just, you know, do you know what? It, it's okay. Life's too short. It change, It's a, it, because it's the heart change. And what we need to do is be careful that we don't live out of our old carnal nature, but we live out of the new nature that God has put inside of us. 
You know, you're in the supermarket and somebody serves you. I know they're doing their job and I know they might not have smiled at you, but why not try and catch that eye and say, have a great day, thank you for serving me. You'd be surprised the looks you will get. I know some, some of those people on the, in the supermarket will look at you and like, and I know we don't even talk to people sometimes in the supermarkets, do we now with automatic, uh, what do you call it? When it goes, it goes up to the telling, you, 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 you pass everything through. There's no even, not even ready to smile. I, I found myself saying to one of these automatic machines the other day when I was in a supermarket with Rachel, I looked at it and I said, thank you. And Rachel said, what are you? I said, well, I've got to say thank you to somebody. So if, if you think that's too crazy, all I'm trying to do is create an appreciation. I love to say thank you to people. I spent a lot of time on Sunday going around thanking people, thanking people on the car parking, thanking people on the welcome team, thanking people in the behind the cafe, thanking people in the worship band, thanking people on our children's, thanking people on the tech booth, thanking, thanking, thanking people just for coming. You hear us say that all the time. Thank you for choosing to come to Destiny. It's it's a, a, a porch moment. It's a door opening moment. When somebody comes up to you and says, I've got a bone to pick with you, you know what? You close the door. But when somebody comes up to you and says, do you know what I am so happy to see you. Thank you so much for all that you mean to me. It opens a door. It's, but it's also godly. It's not, just, it's not just winsome. It's godly. Let me read this to you. Paul says to the Philippians in chapter 1, verse 3, Paul says, I thank God every time I remember you. Well, the Philippians loved that. Here's the great apostle Paul saying, God, thank you for the Philippians. They must have said, that, that's us. That means something to us. It opened the door for Paul for a lot of good things that he had to say to the Philippians, uh, because actually it's a whole whole book about the joy. Um, but he's saying, right, it's, it's a door opener for Paul to say to his to, to say to these people in, in, in Philippi, I thank God for you. Then in verse 4, he says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Do you know this evening we are saying to a lot of people, many dozens of people, uh, you know, there's a it's a big team that serves you and me and the Lord in destiny on a Sunday and on a other days during the week all together we have a very busy program there's a lot going, there's a lot more going on sometimes than what you think there's a lot more going on that, than, than what you're involved with but there's people every time there's something going on it's all about people people serving people giving their time people giving their talents people smiling people praying people giving people coming out early standing in the cold weather or the rain people holding an umbrella people teaching children people practicing and rehearsing during the week to get ready for the band on sunday people preparing sunday school lessons people working you know to, to make everything happen and keep the building clean and organized and people 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 you can't do something unless you've got someone and that's something 49 and a half years into the ministry I know you can't just decide to go and do something unless you've got someone so my heart tonight that's what we're doing this evening upstairs is saying to a lot of people dozens and dozens of them thank you I'm saying it to you as well thank you I'm also saying to you you know what about you being involved in that next year that you could also become part of that team so you're not just an attender or even just somebody who is there just, well, you know, count on me for praying. Well, thank God for your praying. Oh, well, I'm giving. Thank God for your giving. But what about also giving some time and giving some effort and giving some energy and serving? You know, one of our strap lines that we love that helps us with our vision about being a church of the word, worship and witness is part of our witness is not just telling G the world about Jesus, but our testimony, our witnesses. And remember, a minister, we're involved. We're all working towards the vision. You're all working towards, well, primarily the vision that God gave me for the church and to the other pastors and elders that they own that vision that God gave me. And we've been working together towards an agenda for that for years. When you come and serve here, you are helping me fulfill my vision, but actually our vision. You're helping us to do what God has called us as a church to do. And, and that is something that some point Paul was saying here, I, I'm, I'm grateful for your partnership. 
And then he goes on in verse 6, he says, I'm confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, we're not, none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. Uh, all the people that we're honoring this evening, they're not perfect. You know, we make mistakes. We come a bit short. We're also pretty good at many of the things that we do. And, and I am very proud of the team of volunteers and, and the staff team that are around us. I'm very proud of everyone for the effort, for the diligence, for the time, because they're giving. They don't just do the minimum. You know, I always say that will do is not good enough. We've got to ask ourselves, how can we do it better? How can we serve better? How? Another one of our little lines that's part of our vision underliner is excellence for his excellency. And I'm grateful for everybody that's caught that and with energy and with passion and, and in overtime and in overdrive, you help me to fulfill the vision that God's called us to do and to do it well. That's why we don't leave things to chance. That's why, you know, you come in on a Sunday or you come in on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday or a Friday, depending on what's happening in, in church at that time. And you don't say, oh, well, this is ready that isn't ready well that isn't ready you know we try and cover all those bases and make sure it's done but how can we do it because of people people like you and people who are upstairs this evening being honored to say we just wanted to say to them thank you for serving the lord it goes on this and i'm finishing here it's right for me to feel like this about all of you paul says it's right in other words he's he's saying i'm not um I'm not speaking some, some empty words here. This is not flattery. It's right for me to feel like this about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I'm in chains or defending or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. And I want to say that to you. It's right for me to feel proud about the team at Destiny. It's right for me on behalf of all of our pastors and elders and leaders and to say to you thank you we're proud of you to say to you the door is wide open for you it's right because you know god's been doing a great job at destiny we've got we've gathered a great team of people we've got a great future uh, I, I, god has really spoken to me a word about this next year i'll share that with you sometime coming up uh, but it's a very important very simple word you'll see it you'll hear it you'll know it it's going to be a real focus as we turn the year into the new year and it's a good word and it's a good word from god and it's a good time to come so thank you we love you Thank you for helping us this last year. Thank you for this Christmas time. Thank you for inviting all your friends to come to church on Sunday and for our carol service. Thank you for coming on Christmas Day. Thank you for coming on New Year's Day. We've got a great program all over this Christmas time. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for giving of tithes and offerings. Thank you for your prayer time. Thank you for attending faithfully to all the services that we're doing. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting our village, our vision. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And in, I thank God every time I remember you. So a real big God bless from me. I, I'm going to have to scoot right now. We've got a very busy time make, making all of this happen today. Um, but we're really, really, really looking forward to Sunday. And uh, you're going to see some messages uh, in, in a moment now saying, Sunday, Christmas family, Christmas carol service, 9, 15, 11 a.m. Children have been rehearsing for a long time. Thank you, families, for coming to both services so your kids can be involved in both of them. And then the following Sunday, of course, Christmas Day, one service, 10 a.m. Free waffles and drinks. Oh, wow, we, we've been working really hard to make that service very special. Uh, you're going to love it. And then the following service, what, the following Sunday, 1st of January, one service, 10 a.m., before we then revert back to our normal program. And that, that's also going to be a special. That is going to be called a service of hope. And in that, there is just a hint about something that God is telling me about what's ready for our new year. We love you. God bless you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening.
God can do.